Hey guys, and thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to be looking at creating some forests for your video games. I'm going to go over some techniques that you can use on how to make a standard forest for your game. A sort of forest that you might use to fill out an area, but the forest has no special landmarks within it. This is a great way of filling out empty spaces in your worlds, and then perhaps building upon it at a later date. So let's go. Before we start, let's look at some foliage in other video games. I always say that to create art for games, you kind of have to play games, let's be fair. So let's dive straight into this first one, which is Kingdom Come Deliverance. Okay, so here we have quite a dense forest, to be fair. There's a lot of large trees, there's lots of ground cover like clovers and small bushes, roots, I suppose I can see some mushrooms there, but basically the ground, it's not very visible. Okay, so in this one you can quite clearly see the ground. There are still some large trees, but mostly it's just using grass instead of bushes. I'd probably call this medium density, I suppose. Okay, this next one I would definitely, definitely call light density. So as you can see, there's clearly just a lack of anything in this. It's more of just an open forest with minimal ground cover. There are some large trees though, uh, and the occasional bush. Next, we're on to Vermintide. As you can see, there's some medium-sized trees. We've got some bush coverage, roots, rocks, and patches of grass. Kind of similar to Kingdom Come Deliverance in a way, I suppose, but obviously with a sort of different art style slash twist. Okay, so finally, let's check out Hell Let Loose. It's a different type of forest this time, but the structure is still the same. We've got medium trees, uses of bushes, grass patches, rocks, and even flowers. I also want to take note that throughout all of the videos shown, the average distance between the trees is roughly about 5 meters. Okay, so before we start, here I have a small terrain. I have a landscape material on it, and I'll link this in the description if anyone likes it. Let's try and make a mix between all the forests shown in the videos. First of all, I like to paint with a texture the areas my trees are going to go. This is almost like a forest block out in a way. By painting around, you're basically establishing your forest shapes. Next, we're using the erosion tool to make the landscape go up and down in different places. This is to create variation. What you gotta do is you gotta keep holding down for more exaggerated bumps and hills in the terrain. Make sure that the noise mode on the left is set to both. And if you want lots of small noise details, then set the noise scale to low. And for large noise details slash hills, stuff like that, then you want it on medium or high or something like that. Make sure the brush is really large so you can smooth out the areas that are too steep. And if you need to, you can also use the ramp tool to add slope shapes if necessary. Okay, so next we're going to move on to placing some large trees in. Um, the tree size can obviously depend on the forest size that you're going with, but uh, for me I'm going to go with something fairly large I think. Um, I tend to select multiple large tree types and then I set the radius to roughly about 50 and this is so that they don't spawn inside each other. Also please note, try not to have too much repetition as for when you get up to those distances those LODs start to kick in and then you, they really really start to stand out. Next, I like to put some smaller trees in to bridge the gap between the big ones that are already in there. What you gotta do is just kind of plaster them around at random, sort of set the radius so that they don't clip inside the other trees. The other thing I want to say is that it's really, really good to try and put smaller trees at the edge of the forest, and this way when the player looks through the forest, 
those smaller trees, they're going to be lower, so that would mean that the forest kind of looks like it doesn't have an end to it, because all you're seeing is leaves. Um, and sometimes this can work, sometimes it, it doesn't, sometimes it sort of does. Okay, so the next layer is to select four medium-sized foliage assets, or maybe some tree saplings. The reason why you should go with four maximum is that it's really, really good to keep consistency. And if you have tons of different things, then it will start to feel a bit messy and the colors will probably mismatch and all of that. So it's really good to keep a consistent theme of choices. Make sure you have all four selected in your foliage tab and that the radius is set according to the density that you want. Now, I did mention radius before, but just in case you didn't know, the radius prevents you from painting objects inside one another. And then you just paint, just paint freely. Don't need to go into detail with this at all. Just, just go for it. Okay, now for some small coverage. Select some assets that don't have that much height to them and make sure it's just green leaf based plants for now. Once you have these, again, just paint them randomly across the terrain and remember to always keep them consistent with the other foliage in terms of colours, biome and stuff like that. Now we're going to paint in some rocks. The size is up to you on this, of course, but try not to paint too much of these all over the terrain. Just have select areas with higher rock density than others, as this is way more interesting. Unless you're working with a super small forest, if you've been painting randomly, then you're bound to have some gaps to fill. For this, I like to do groups of flowers. I usually paint flowers in clustered groups, usually based on the colour of the flower, with occasional mixes here and there. Next, we're going to paint on the landscape. The purpose of this stage is to use textures to break up the texture that you used for your initial forest block out. Try and use rock, grass, mud and dirt textures for this part. Again, like usual, don't paint intricately, just paint randomly around. Don't overdo this stage though, have the brush at about half strength and just paint randomly. So next, we're going to add some wood detail. We're going to paint in fallen branches, twigs, that sort of thing. For assets such as fallen branches, don't put these absolutely everywhere. Remember when we work with the rocks, it's the same sort of thing. You have to put them in in clustered or random locations. I always say to paint randomly with nature, because nature more or less grows randomly. If you sit there slowly and intricately building everything, it would probably look too organised. You're aiming for unorganised, messy, positioned assets throughout an area like this. I also have these detail branch alphas, which I'm actually going to paint everywhere, uh, completely the opposite to the other thing. I'm going to paint them everywhere where there are trees, more or less. So we're not quite at the end yet, now is an interesting stage, I call this the special stage. What I do is I singularly place items of interest into the scene, be it a fallen tree, a big rock, a tree stump or even a pond. 
I repeat, we're not using the foliage painter here. We are singularly placing. Now, obviously, if you've got a giant forest, then probably work out some sort of method of painting this. Or if you're not really interested in special items at all and you just want a forest, then maybe just leave it. But for me personally, I like to do this. Okay, so now we're on to the final stage. We're basically just going through the scene and we're adding bits or we're taking away bits. More or less the cleanup stage from my previous video. For example, I feel like there isn't enough medium coverage in certain parts of the forest and I want to get those cleaned up and added. Also, maybe I want to add foliage to grow where the rocks are, or perhaps I feel like I've added too much to a certain area and I want to take it away. Maybe I also want to try a new asset. Remember that by this stage, you've got the template already made, so you can experiment lots and lots of ideas, and if you don't like them, you can just revert back to your base template. I'm just going to relight the scene a little bit and then that's it from me. So this is my method of building quick fantastic forests and if you stick to this in a layered fashion you're more likely to achieve a similar result to this and always always remember to be random and free especially when you're painting with nature. One final thing I wanted to say was that I want to thank everyone for the continued support on this channel and I'm sorry I haven't been posting videos very frequently at all. It's really difficult juggling freelance work with making videos. I would like to say though that I don't plan on making this YouTube channel just a casual thing and I do actually have many many great plans to make this a unique and interesting channel to visit for all people throughout this awesome industry. So anyway, Cheers for stopping by, and uh, good luck with your forests. Cheers.